So um, thank you so much for a nice introduction. Everyone can hear me? Oh, I can maybe <laughs> have it a little bit down here. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Jakub for inviting us here, that we can sit here and speak for you. It's really, really nice, and we love to speak to people and to motivate and inspire people. It was a little bit difficult to get us here. It took me one year since the first email Jakub sent. Uh, but I think it's, it was even better because now we went much farther in the process of our company and we developed a lot, so we have even more to say than we had one year ago. But uh, back to the short introduction, my name is Teresa Salte and um, I'm a co-founder of Elite Bloggers. I'm also an author of blog Teresa in Oslo. And we are going to speak about lots of things and uh, you will see later on what's kind of the target of this, of this uh, class, I would say. Dobry dan. Uh, this is Nelepsi. This is my princess now. Anna Shevko. That's, uh, that's what I know in Czech. And as you maybe understand, it's my wife teaching me. Um, I'm John Eric. I'm from Norway. And I'm also the co founder of Philip Bloggers. And I'm married to Teresa. What we will uh, speak about today, I have to see the screen here. Uh, we will speak a little bit about how to start a business. We will uh, speak about what is the most important to think about if you want to start a business or do something on your own. We will uh, compare a little bit Norway compared to Czech, in, especially in the blogging world. And uh, Teresa will talk a little bit about uh, Teresa and Oslo. And uh, we will tell you how we moved from working on a small, ugly sofa to being in a big office in Prague. Uh, of course, we will also talk about elite bloggers. And I will start now just giving you a little introduction in case you haven't heard about the company. It's a company we are running in Prague. And what we are doing is that we are representing the, or some of the biggest bloggers in Czech Republic. And we are helping them grow, and we are helping them develop, and we also give them the possibility to earn some money on doing blogging. Hmm? <laughs> Perfect. So I also would like to ask you, who are you? Because the, the name of this presentation is to follow how to follow your dreams. So I want to ask you to raise your hand, the ones that you think that you are a dreamer. Perfect. That's that's what I wanted to see. It's quite important because we, yeah, we, you you will get to know a little bit later. I found this quote: "Dreaming, after all, is a form of planning." Um, I think it quite fits because um, I always been a dreamer. Like when I was small kid doing my gymnastic class, I always been dreaming about being an Olympic champion. It didn't really become true, but I had a lot of other dreams. And one of them was um, to move to Scandinavia. It really fascinated me. I don't really know why and where did it come from. Maybe it's in my genes or maybe yeah, some ancestors of my family were from Norway or I don't really know. But um, yeah, that was my big dream and um, I made it come true. And uh, when, I, when I moved to Norway, I. It's, it was obviously because of Yonarek. <laughs> I actually, to be honest, I really wanted to move to Denmark before I bet. Then I ended up in Norway, which I'm really happy for because Norway is even better. It has nicer nature and nicer language. Like I don't know if any one of you heard ever about uh, like to anyone speak Danish, but it's yeah, it sounds a little bit strange to me. So I'm very happy that I ended up in Norway. But after all, when I moved to Norway, I um, was a little bit struggling there because I thought everything is going to be very, very easy. That I will move there and I had a lot of experience in different fields. And I, the only work I could find was a work in a coffee place. And I had to wake up every morning at 5 in the morning and, and serve coffee. And that wasn't really my imagination of my dream life. And so. I wanted to kind of share the experience with my friends and family, and that's why I started Block. Um, it was very, very innocent because I didn't really know anything about blogging, 
and I just wanted to share the struggles in different country. I wanted to share how different the culture is and what am I doing there and um, all these things. So you can see this is one of my first blog posts. I'm not really proud of it. <laughs> like when I, when I look back, I'm like, oh my God, who could read this blog? <laughs> it was a little bit strange. It was very, very short. The, if you see the picture is quite ugly, like I don't really <laughs> understand. That would never happen now <laughs> after five years of uh, blogging. And uh, yeah, it didn't really say much, but it was just to show you how innocent it was. I just, I just started, I just started to write and in the beginning that was only my friends and family who read it and yeah, throughout the time it became quite big, but I will, I will show you a little bit later on. So I basically had no idea what is blogging. I didn't know that there are big bloggers. I didn't know um, how to blog. I didn't really know what are the rules, like how long articles you should write, that you should have a nice and good quality pictures. It was just me trying to, to write some of the stories, what is happening in Norway and how I feel about Norwegian people and how it is to actually live on your own, not to be you know, under the roof of your parents that so they can, you know, you have always the full fridge of food and it's a little bit hard because Norway is a very expensive country if you go there with check money. So I remember every time I went to store and I was supposed to pay, it was like, oh my God, <laughs> everything was so expensive. So yeah, these were some of the topics I was writing about. I had no idea that some people can turn block into a business. So it was just really me doing it because I really love to write and I wanted to share the experience. I have no idea that one day blogging can be my full-time job or will be my full-time job. Oh, I'm clicking too fast. And um, I had no idea how many opportunities I will have through my blog, that uh, I can travel the world, I can meet very many interesting people, I can go to TV shows and radio shows and, and got an offer to write a book. And yeah, but I really, when I like look back, I feel that it was, I was so lucky to be like, that everything that I started, it was like so innocent. There was kind of no way like that I had this big plan. Okay, I start this blog because I want to travel the world or I want to be invited and actually sit here and speak for 100 people. And here you can see actually it's some of the posts uh, from Norway, it's some pictures. And uh, the readers, they, they love Norway because it's like a little bit different lifestyle and through the blog I wanted to also share the things I really, really liked about Norway. The way how Norwegian people can enjoy life and how they know how to relax and how they appreciate the family and time spent with the family. And I don't know, I think it was one of the reasons why people came back to the blog because they also wanted to learn these things and they found uh, motivation um, how to maybe get a little bit better life and think about things that they don't really think in a normal, yeah, normal daily, on a normal daily basis. So here are just some pictures. It's some pictures from the Norwegian cabin. It's Norwegian nature. It's also a very popular post where about um, how Norwegian people do a lot of sports and how they love to train and how they be how they like to be connected to the nature. Um, yeah. Here is how the blog a little bit developed throughout the years. As I said, I started in June 2012, so it's going to be uh, five years. So now I would say that the design looks a little bit better. I have a little bit nicer pictures, better, like bigger pictures, higher quality. And um, I'm obviously writing much longer text and I always try to follow what the readers like to read and you know the feedback for me is really really important because I know that okay this is something people really like and they enjoy reading and I 
then if the readers enjoy it, I enjoy it as well. So for me, the biggest motivation is when the readers write me emails and, and like say, yeah, this was really, really good article. I keep reading it over and over and it gives me motivation to follow my dreams. And I can see that one Teresa who kind of was nobody and went to Norway could like really have a happy life in Norway. And I want to do it as well. So that's kind of my biggest motivation. And yeah, that's why I keep blogging. So yeah, maybe after this presentation you can go to the blog if you don't know it and you can check some of the articles. Maybe you will like some of them, maybe not, but just that you know what I'm talking about here. It's also on Instagram and, and Facebook. It's a big part of the blog is also social media because uh, not everyone has all the time, you know, uh, to read long articles. So sometimes they just follow on Instagram and when they are interested in some article they come back to the blog and, and read it. Well, it basically let, I don't even know how it happened, but um, in 2014, I won the Blogger of the Year, and for me, it was something really amazing. I, as I said, when I started blogging, I had no idea what am I like going into, and to win this big prize, it was, it was something really, really nice, and it was, um, very nice to feel the support from the readers because that's the readers who are voting in this competition. And in 2015 I won again and it was even nicer because it's much harder to win after you already won. And um, it just developed into one big craziness because just from like writing a blog for kind of um, just like my own happiness, it's it started to be a little bit, little bit crazy. Thank you. Um, for me, it was uh, a little bit strange when uh, Teresa won the Blogger Karuko the first time, because in Norway it's uh, very different. The whole uh, blogging world works very different, and I was used to meeting headlines like this. Soccer wife earned 9.9 .9 million check last year. That's what was in media and our newspapers everywhere. Uh, you could also see the mother of Michelle, that's the name of her blog, she's saying, I have earned 2.4 million check rounds just in January. And Teresa won the blogger of the year, or you can have Sophia Elisa doubled her income in 2015. When they say double, it actually was from seven and a half million check to 15 million check runs. And uh, <coughs> Teresa won the blogger of the year, and I was sitting there and I could hear the offers she got from check clients. And it was basically like, um, we will give you a pair of socks, or actually you will get one sock, the other one you can get for half price. <laughs> and for that, we want 10 pictures on Instagram, four articles, and uh, five Facebook posts. And I knew how it worked in Norway, and I knew how much power there was in the blogs. And it was so confusing that uh, we ended up talking a lot about it at home. And uh, yeah, you can tell a little bit about what you did. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> this you did. Yeah, yeah, OK. Well, yeah, it was basically I got like 10, 15 emails every single day from different companies yeah, having this ridiculous offers for collaboration. And first of all, I didn't really have the intention to turn my blog into a commercial place. And second of all, most of the emails were absolutely, they didn't make sense at all. It was like randomly sent emails to other hundred bloggers starting like, dear blogger, we really enjoy reading your fashion blog. And I was like, I don't have a fashion blog. They, they had even no idea what I'm writing about. So that was, that was a little bit confusing for me. So what I did, I turned 99% of these offers down. And I chose only companies that I really believed in and they were a big part of our life already. And um, I tried to make a good deals, but good deals makes that, or it means that the good deals are also like for both sides. For me to know that this is a long-term campaign, not that I'm going to represent Nespresso one week and Dolce Gusto another week and another coffee machine another week because that doesn't make sense to me. And if I really want to recommend something to my readers, I really need to believe in it. And 
it's obviously going to be part of my life for a very long time. So I made some deals and I became an ambassador of Nespresso, which basically means that I signed a contract for one year and we had conditions that I'm going to post this amount of posts and it's going to be financially rewarded and they will give me also a lot of like um, information about the coffee they will invite me for some events and i will get to know a lot about the company that i can also like educate uh, the readers so here you can see some of the blog posts or some of the posts i posted i think these are mostly from instagram so it's basically like from our daily life where we like drink we were drinking the coffee and it makes sense for me because it was really part of my life. It wasn't any random thing that this company just, you know, wanted to present on my blog out of out of nothing. If you click. Um, another company that I really became closely connected with is Puma. It makes sense for me because I, I used to do gymnastics and I, I kind of take a lot of these gymnastic pictures and I, I enjoy training a lot and it, it just like for me it was so natural way to like present the high quality clothes and I not to mention that I really fell in love with Puma clothes and it's just like it's for me very very natural way how to kind of present it and how to recommend it to my readers. So here you see some of the posts that uh, I also posted on social media or, or on my blog and the most important thing from why I'm showing you this was that um, I could see that it can work. Like a blogger who has strong social media and strong blog can make like deals that make sense to both sides, both to the blogger and also to the companies. And uh, we were sitting then at home and we could see that it could work for Teresa. And the clients, when they were explained, why it makes sense to make a long-term deal and why it makes sense to make it good, then they were, they wanted it and they understood it. But what we felt was not fair was that other Czech bloggers, they didn't get it because they didn't know how it could be. They haven't seen how it is in other countries. So we tried to figure out like what is the reason that it works in Norway but not in Czech at that point. And what we figured out was that in Norway there's a lot of agencies and the agencies are protecting the bloggers and they are helping them and they speak to the companies more company to company wise, not a little blogger to a big company. And it does a big difference. And what we felt was that it was unfair that the Czech bloggers was not treated correct and in the right way and they didn't have the same possibilities as others. So I think uh, it took two weeks from we figure out this to we had made every plan. We have rented out our apartment in Oslo and we moved to Czech. Because we felt that when we got this idea we just had to get it done and we wanted to do it as soon as possible because we were very enthusiastic about it. Uh, we moved to Prague. We got a small uh, apartment in Prague where we had a very ugly little orange sofa it was maybe the size of these two chairs together. <laughs> and uh, that's where we started. And we actually didn't have any education in marketing. We didn't have any experience. But we just had the passion that we wanted to make this. So we were sitting in this sofa, day out, day in, trying to figure out things. We started meeting some bloggers in coffee places. We started signing some contracts. And eventually, after writing a lot of emails, trying to contact people, we started getting the first clients everything from this little sofa. And it was very interesting because, of course, we couldn't invite anyone for a meeting because this was our apartment. So we had to meet them in coffee places or sometimes we went to a meeting in their place and it was maybe just Teresa having the meeting. So then uh, I was waiting on a bench outside, very nervous until she came out and we could talk about that they had some money and they wanted to use us and we could see that it was working. And uh, after we'd been in this apartment for half a year, we felt that, okay, it's starting to work, we're starting to earn some money for the bloggers and these things, but our goal was also to develop the bloggers and to make blogging better. So what we did at that point was that we found a big apartment in the center of Prague that we rented, and we called it Elite Bloggers Hub. Uh, this we did only with like money we had saved up from the clients we had had so far. 
Uh, we fixed up the whole uh, apartment. We made it uh, help as we said, and it's a place where the bloggers, they can come, they can work, they can uh, just come and have a coffee, be social, or they can work, they can talk with us. And uh, we figure out that if the bloggers stay together more, they can also learn from each other and also grow and become better. Also in the hub, we managed or we got a deal with Nespresso, so we got a coffee corner, which is great for especially for us who's there every day. <laughs> and uh, we also got the Olympus room, as we call it, which is a fully equipped uh, photo atelier where the bloggers can come and they can use it to either take pictures or there's also a lot of camera lenses or the equipment that they can also borrow and take with them home or out to take uh, photos and this things. Also in the hub, we are like arranging a lot of uh, workshops. We have had workshops on how to take pictures, how to be creative, uh, something more. How to handle negative comments. Yeah, we had a workshop with a psych psychologist. <laughs> coach, about a personal coach, coach. Personal coach <laughs> about how to handle negative comments, for example. And everything so the bloggers can develop. Um, within time, we of course developed ourselves too, by being there, by working hard. And we started getting employees and we are becoming bigger and bigger. And actually recently, two weeks ago, we started the process of opening Elite Bloggers Slovakia, which we are, yeah, we are getting towards the end of that now, where we are going to sign 10 bloggers from Slovakia and start to do the same process for them and also to get them clients and to develop them also there. Uh, during the time, we of course have developed some of the, or gotten some of the clients. Here are some of them. Okay. Yeah, I would just maybe say that um, it's, I don't know, I think that it's, yeah, this portfolio is just some of them, as Yonarik said, and it's, we, I feel really proud when I look at that because, like, when I really look back when we were sitting home and being, like, really nervous if, okay, should I really, like, answer this email or, like, it's, it's the beauty of, like, not knowing what's going to happen is, it's really nice, so, like here is some of the clients that I would say that we are mostly proud of and it's big companies. Of course, it took us quite a long time to get there, but uh, yeah, it's Nespresso, Puma or Emirates, which is one of the most popular campaign we had with our bloggers. And uh, Yonarek is going to talk about it a little bit later or it's Samsung or Visit Dubai or Bellissima, Toyota. And as you can see, like the clients are really different. It's from all types of, yeah, it's quite a like, different environment because uh, we also are representing different bloggers. So um, we always try to kind of put the client that fits for the blog and that we can make the campaign works both for the bloggers and for the client. And of course, uh, when we are making the campaigns, it's also important to make it work for the readers, not just for the blogger and the client. But if it's something that doesn't make sense for the reader, it will also not be positive. Uh, during the time, yeah, now the numbers are a little bit outdated because we are in the process right now with uh, developing. So right now we have around 30 bloggers, but these numbers are counted on the 23 bloggers we had two weeks ago. Uh, these bloggers have together 1.1 million patriots per month. They have uh, 1.3 million Instagram followers. And they are reaching 250,000 unique people per month. Actually, 94% of the readers are women. And uh, it's kind of good for us because when a client comes, we can know exactly who is the readers. So the client also know that they are aiming towards 94% of the women. 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 29% women. <laughs> of the readers are from Prague. Brno is uh, on second place on this list. And actually Bratislava is on third place, even though it's Slovakia and we are talking about the Czech bloggers. 82% uh, of the readers are between 18 and 34. This is quite uh, standard. Of course, some of the bloggers, especially maybe food bloggers and mama bloggers, 
have a little bit higher age group, but uh, most of the bloggers is around this numbers. Uh, every month, uh, bloggers are growing around eight to twelve percent on Instagram. That means the more followers they have from before, the more new followers they get per month. Here you can see some of the bloggers we are working with. Of course, that's again it's more bloggers now, and it's of course changing a little bit all the time, but. This is the bloggers we had with us from the start. And here we have actually both food bloggers and fashion, beauty, and lifestyle bloggers. When we are uh, making campaigns, we have uh, these five different communication channels that we are using. Of course, we have the blog because it's the bloggers we are working with. And the blog is very strong because uh, when people write a blog post, it stays there. It's not gone very fast after. While if you, for example, have an Instagram picture, yes, it's there forever, but you maybe have to scroll for 10 minutes to get down to it. While a blog post, you can search up on Google and people can find it a long time after. Uh, Facebook, we are using. We are not using it that much as some of the other channels, but uh, a lot of clients want it also. Instagram is probably the strongest one. It's the one everyone wants to use, and I guess most of you here is also on Instagram. And we have a uh, YouTube. The reason why we have YouTube is because some of our bloggers are also quite strong YouTubers. And of course it makes sense when we are making campaigns with them that we sometimes also add in YouTube videos into the campaign. We also have uh, a list of around 30 external bloggers and YouTubers that we are also using in some campaigns if we don't have the right bloggers for using in the campaign. And then we have Snapchat, but uh, after Instagram came with Instagram stories, it's very, very little use of Snapchat anymore, because most especially of the bloggers has gone over to using Instagram stories instead of Snapchat. I think it's a lot because it's much easier to have everything in one channel instead of switching between the apps. So here I'm going to talk a little bit about why the commercial on the block is so strong. And again, I would like to ask you a question. Like imagine a situation that uh, your friend is going to tell you, yeah, hey, Teresa, this is really nice coffee place. I was there last week. And then compare this situation to a billboard that you are driving on a highway and you see a billboard on the right side and there is this beautiful coffee and taken, you know, some nice logo and some message there. So who of you trust more your friend? Like a word of mouth. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to hear again. It wasn't that difficult question, but uh, it's actually like, it's actually explain what, why the commercial on the blog works so much and so good. Because um, when, when you have a like, favorite blogger that you go and you read like regularly and you maybe follow her for quite a long time, you kind of develop a personal relationship to that person. You know that this person has uh, maybe, I don't know, that that person travels somewhere or you know what she had for breakfast, you, you know her lifestyle and you kind of share the same values. Because if you wouldn't, you wouldn't follow her. And, we call it um, virtual relationship. Um, like sometimes also to me it happens that I go on a street and then there is some person that like saying, yeah, hi Teresa, how is generic? How was your weekend in the mountains? And I'm like, do I know the person? And it's, it's, it's really funny because that person really doesn't realize right away that she, she knows me, but I never seen her ever. And then it becomes this awkward silence and she's like, yeah, hi, uh, I'm Linka. <laughs> I read your blog. And it's, it's, it's quite funny because, you know, these people who are like reading my blog, they really get to get the feeling that they know me. And um, so if I go on a blog and I recommend them something, they're like, okay, but if Teresa says so, I guess that it's, it's good because I like what she's doing here and there. So that's why the commercial on the blog is so strong and it's happening worldwide and it's happening big time in Scandinavia. And so, yeah, that's one of the, that's one of the important fact that we are always telling to our clients when they are coming to us and they're saying, but why do you think this works more than a print commercial in magazine? 
and yeah, so that's that's some of the points we are saying. Um, it's also the trust of the readers. Uh, of course, when you are a blogger, you have to build trust of the readers that uh, everything you write on the blog, the readers really believe that you are saying the truth, not to really trick them around. And that's also a very important point when you do a commercial on the blog, that you would never recommend a thing you don't really believe yourself. So I have this rule that I would never kind of write about any commercial that I would not recommend to my sister. I wouldn't like tell her, hey, this is really good uh, coffee place if I talk about, again, the coffee place. So that's very, very important that um, the readers of the bloggers trust them. Um, it's also that the bloggers have very original content. You don't really have to set up like a fake situation because you have the really real life situations. You don't really have to have a big, you know, um, hundred people that you are shooting a commercial in Japan and you make this perfect scene and perfect light to look like real because when you are a blogger that that is your life and you just go and take the picture in a life real life situation it's also that the bloggers have big reach on social media and also on the blogs and when we talk about big reach um, it's like thousands or ten thousands of unique readers per day which is if you compare, for example, some of the reach of uh, some other campaigns in marketing, that's like really big difference. Um, of course, it's also the specific target group that you have on the blog, as Yonarek was talking about before, that um, we can see we are tracking all our bloggers on Google, Analy Google Analytics and we can see what is the target group, what is the age group, where these people are from, and all these, all these other details. And last but not least point is um, that the commercial, we call it like it's, it's like a wanted commercial. Because if, for example, me, if, I, if I'm looking for some tights, like running tights, I want to go to some blog that that person is writing about running and I kind of like search good recommendations. And um, if I compare, for example, if we go to cinema and we are like, sitting in the cinema looking for, for the movie and then boom there is coming this commercial for some washing powder i'm like really annoyed because that's not what i want to see like i want to see the movie so that's also quite quite important thing yeah, yeah. i will just uh, show you some examples of some campaigns we've been doing uh, here you have a campaign for a brand called Kali Jo. that's a uh, norwegian actually uh, clothing brand or sports brand for girls. Uh, what well, it's a little bit special with this brand in Czech Republic is that they have chosen to do all their marketing through the bloggers. So basically, we did campaign for them in the way that we had the bloggers post Instagram pictures, these type of things. But also the bloggers was the one they went for the photo shoot for the spring collection, the winter collection. And in the catalogs and on the banners on their webpage and even on their product on their webpage, it's bloggers who are presenting the clothes. And uh, it's of course very interesting for us and of course it also comes from Norway where this is more and more normal that the clients or brands are much more using bloggers and influencers also for different type of marketing or different type of campaigns. And they are more, instead of looking for a model to do something, they are looking for an influencer who would fit to this type of campaign. Another one we had is uh, Vodafone, which we are working with right now. They were giving out some new phones and they wanted to use us to promote it and they wanted to show people how it is in use or how it is in real life. So that's, we have bloggers who have the phone, they have had it for a year. And they like just using it in daily, they are posting about it, they are trying the camera and basically Vodafone was self-confident and they know that it's a cheap phone, but it's really good. And that's why they wanted to give it to bloggers so bloggers could take the pictures with it and everything and actually prove that it's a good phone. It's of course uh, a campaign we like very much because it's a long-term campaign and it's interesting and we get to try a new product. We also have uh, Emirates, which was sending one of our bloggers to Dubai on uh, first class in the plane. And it was kind of just to show in the moment 
situations that she was sharing from Insta stories when she was on the plane. She was sharing how it was for her in Dubai. But basically what they also were doing is that they sent her to a festival in Dubai. And she was sharing a lot actually from the festival. But they know that if Czech people want to go there to Dubai and they want to go there, then maybe they will fly with Emirates. So instead of focusing too much on themselves, they were actually focusing on the destination. Then we have uh, Pandora, which I have understood is very popular here in Czech Republic. There's always big lines. <laughs> but uh, I know that the bloggers also love it. And every time we have a campaign with Pandora, they are all very happy. Do you have something about Pandora you want to say? No? <laughs> And then it's that, of course, not all campaigns are perfect. There can always be mistakes. And uh, this is this Sophia Elise. I was talking about her earlier. And she had a campaign that she posted on social media that she was out walking. And then she just saw a guy who wasn't breathing on the ground, but she didn't know anything she could do, so she was just standing there and looking. And then she's writing about that the ambulance was coming later and helping and taking the man away. This was uh, getting a lot of neg negative criticism or negative feedback. And even the media was writing about it, the biggest newspapers were writing about it, and everyone was like spreading hate towards her that she was just standing there, and especially that she took a selfie together with the man lying on the ground. What turned out and what was supposed to come three days later, but what uh, had to came, come the next day, was this picture. Actually, the rest of the picture. Because the whole thing was a campaign made for a type of Red Cross organization in Norway that they wanted to get people to do the, what is it called, the C CPR? The first aid. First aid, CPR, mm. learning this type of things. They wanted to get people to understand that it's important. But uh, she didn't mark the first picture as commercial and she got so much criticism and when it came out that it actually was a campaign, it of course also the organization got so much criticism and it wasn't actually good for any parts. Maybe some people got the first date and the CPR classes after but the criticism they got was worse than the profit they got from it. Yeah, this one, not this one. <laughs> so it was just to show that not everything can go okay and that it's really important, maybe something that we didn't really mention, it's really important when, when you are a blogger and when you are doing commercial on the blog to also market, to be really like honest with the readers and to really stand up for the companies you are going to represent and to tell them, okay, yeah, I'm presenting Nespresso, but this is a commercial post that that um, uh, this also hasn't been here in the Czech Republic before we came. And when we started to market commercials, it's um, got a lot of criticism as well, because we were the first one who kind of like said, well, look, there is a lot of hidden commercial that the readers really had no idea about. So that was a little bit difficult for us, but we still stand for it. We still stand for it. We want to be honest with the readers and because us bloggers wouldn't be here if the readers wouldn't read the blogs and yeah, if they wouldn't trust us. But yeah, back, uh, back to the presentation. Uh, here we prepared uh, because yeah, here we prepared like a slide where we want to tell you what is the most important or what was the most important for us uh, when we started a company. And uh, we chose, I think, six keywords that we want to talk about. And um, again, when we started and we said over and over, we had no clue what we were doing. Like none of us had education in marketing. Uh, I studied political science at Charles University here in Prague, or in Prague. And then um, in Norway, I studied culture, environment, sustainability. So nothing even closely related to marketing. And Eonetic studied law, so also really nothing connected to marketing. So here we just want to show that the education is not like everything if you have these kind of things that we are going to talk about. And first, most important thing is the motivation. Um, it doesn't have to be only when you're starting a company. It's the motivation is the thing that is like dragging you forward. And 
if you don't have motivation, you can never like finish it up. And it's of course it's maybe easier when you are two people because you can motivate each other and you are not alone on it. But that's one of the most important keyword I would say. The other thing, which is quite obvious, but to start something on your own, you have to have an idea. And the idea has to be good. But it's not always enough because you also have to have the right timing. Like we came up with an idea that we want to do do, but nobody else did it in Czech yet. If we would have a state and I would have finished the rest of my law education and Teresa would just have worked a few years before we started, then maybe there would be four other agencies in Czech and it wouldn't be a good idea anymore. So of course it's important to have a good idea, but it also has to be the right timing for the idea you're having. Uh, this is actually also very, very important, I think, is that people have to believe their own intuition. Uh, Nastravi. <laughs> uh, we could feel it a lot that for us it was very important. When we, for example, hired our first employee, we had, uh, yeah, we had two candidates ending up in the end, where one had the education and the experience, experience in marketing, and the other person did not have this type of qualities. But our something told us and our intuition said that go for the other one, go for the one who don't have the experience and education. And we did and uh, this person's been great and we would never be where we are now without this person. And I'm pretty sure if we at that point wouldn't have listened to our intuition, we wouldn't be here where we are now. I smile. <laughs> yeah. Another thing is passion. Of course, obviously, you have to be passionate about what you are doing. And um, it doesn't really matter what it is. It doesn't really matter if it's marketing or if it's helping people, if it's sport, if it's anything. It's just like if you're really passionate about it, you, you can do it. And yeah, we, we loved what we were doing, even though we didn't really know what we were doing. And now we are in the stage that we can go in front of people and start telling it. We couldn't really do that one year ago because we were in the beginning of the company and it would really sound unprofessional. So now we can admit that we had actually no clue. <laughs> but it was the combination of all these keywords uh, that like got us where we are here right now. Another point is uh, courage. You have to have the balls to kind of go for it. You have to be, uh, you, you can't be scared of things. And uh, of course, uh, you also can't be that crazy that you go and like ruin people's life or just go into big offices of MasterCard and just starting a big theater. And not, not really, you have to still have some sense of, yeah. Yeah, so sense what you can or what you cannot. But the courage is very, very important. And I can tell you that there is thousands of people who have really good idea, ideas, but uh, they don't have the courage to go for it. So if you have any idea that you really believe in and you have all these things, I would just say like try it. Because if you don't try it, you, you never figure out if it would work out or not. And uh, the last one is uh, patience, because uh, I actually had some other friends who tried to start some companies in Norway, but they started and they came to me after two weeks <laughs> saying like, yeah, but I don't see any results. I think I have to shut it down after two weeks. And it's just important to, if you believe in your idea and if you have the motivation and you, have, you are passionate about it, just believe in it and keep going, not give up after too short time. Actually, don't give up before you have to, before you don't have any other chance. Mm. And back to the patients, uh, that's also another thing that is happening a lot because there is obviously a lot of people who want to start their own blog. And I get lots of messages every single day and these people are like, yeah, Teresa, I've been writing for a month and I still don't have readers there. Like, how should I do it? How can I have a lot of readers? And I always say, yeah, first of all, you have to know that you like what you are doing. And that's very, very important. And you have to be patient. The readers doesn't just appear on the blog within two days or two weeks or not even two months. 
it took me over a year and a half before I have like a stable amount of followers and so yeah the patience is very very important and doesn't really matter if it's when you're opening your own business or starting a blog or studying maybe for an exam. Can I say something more here? Actually when it comes to starting a blog I would say all the points here are also working and I know that uh, Teresa now she is also getting some emails from someone or some people who are saying like they have used now half a year making the design of the blog ready. They're thinking about launching it maybe within a few months. In this case, it's about the courage. Like maybe you have everything else, but you just have to go for it. So all the points, it's not just about starting a company, but it's about starting a new sport. It's about starting a blog. It's basically everything. Yep, and that's actually it. Hmm? It went faster than I thought, but uh, yeah, maybe longer when you look at the watch. But yeah, now is the fun part. I would say this is the best part of all the speeches we are having because uh, now you can ask us questions what you are really interested in. Maybe we were talking about things that it was not really interesting for you. So now it's the time that you can really ask anything you want. And I know that there was this app, there was this app that there's already been some questions. And just, just keep asking because we are here for you. We travel all the way from Prague to answer your question. So really don't be shy. And either ask like personally like this or write it into the app. This <laughs> work has OK, so. I would maybe give a like a turn to you because you are here. <laughs> if anyone have a questions from the audience before I start reading the questions from the app, anyone here who wants to ask anything? Yes. Can I ask in Czech? Please? Yes, of course. <laughs> hmm. How am I with the book? <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah. I knew this question was coming. <laughs> it comes all the time. Uh, yeah, can I answer in English? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the book. Yeah, uh, I'm with the book. I'm I'm writing it. I keep working on it, uh, but it's it's very very difficult to find time for it because uh, yeah, since I got the offer already two years ago, and. Um, so basically I've been working for two years and I'm still not done. Um, but uh, yeah, the company takes so much time. And uh, then when we come back, like when we started, we were really working from seven in the morning until almost midnight every single day. So there was no time basically to come home and write a book. So I, was prefer I preferred to write the blog post. And um, now it's a little bit better. But uh, yeah, I'm writing on it and it should be, I have the, I would say, seventh deadline <laughs> already <laughs> that I didn't make. It's, uh, the, the, this one is in May and so it has to be done in May before also it's, yeah, I'm already pushed because of the pregnancy. So I also need to finish it up before other kids are here. <laughs> Other kids. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the company. Uh -huh, not me. <laughs> no. Yeah, so it should be out in October 2017. But if it's going to be, it's hard to say. But I will try. I will do my best. Yeah. Anyone else from the audience? Mm -hmm. Možná. I can translate it for you, if I think it's a good question. Okay. <laughs> ano, uh, tak tady ve předu, prosím. How are you planning to combine the blood group? <laughs> it's really yeah, hard question. questions. Yeah, how I'm planning to combine the work with motherhood. Um, yeah, my plan is to make it. <laughs> Somehow, I have no idea how hard it's going to be, but um, in Norway, I heard that it's very normal that the husband and the father is helping a lot. <laughs> At yeah. least that's what Yonarek was telling me all the time, all the years we were together. That's true. So, 
Yeah, I think we will manage, but also I don't know if it was a joke or not, but two months ago Yonatic was just like, yeah, so after the bird I give you two weeks and then you're back in the office. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> it's not what I heard about Norwegian people at all. But yeah, we will see. I'm planning to make it, yeah, I'm planning to work. Um, I have to be in the company. I, it's, it's my baby, <laughs> our baby. <laughs> And I, I don't want to really give it up and yeah, we, we, will, we will see how it will go. The, the best thing is that uh, we can plan everything ourselves. We are in the hub, so it's quite nice like uh, environment where we can try to have the baby there. We can have a baby bed and stuff. So yeah, the baby will be part of Elite Bloggers. And we have a lot of bloggers who can take care of the baby. <laughs> I think uh, in this case it's most important just to be flexible and be ready for anything. So just take it as it comes. Yes. There was one more question there in the back. Yes? If we, we, if we are um, tagging the sponsored post by hashtag Elite Bloggers at, do you want to answer? Yeah, I can. Uh, in the start, we used the hashtag Elite Bloggers ad, but uh, after a while, we figured out that, or in the start, we did it also because we wanted to mark that it was ad, and it was also a self promotion of us that people would see what clients we are working with and it would generate more clients. Uh, after a while, we figured out that we don't kind of need this self promotion anymore, so we changed it to just hashtag ad, but uh, now it's like the bloggers have a open if they want to use hashtag elite bloggers ad or hashtag just ad. Is that the question? Mm. Mm. Yeah, perfect. There was one more I could say. Yes? Yeah, I have a question for Joey. Uh, how do you feel, you know, uh, living next to a successful woman? <laughs> 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 I think you should ask her how it is to be next to a successful man. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, uh, not at all. I really like it, and uh, I get my part of the attention too. <laughs> it's nice. And uh, of course, when she has some uh, deals or these things, it's also dripping on me. So it's good. But uh, like seriously, it's uh, it's not the problem for me, not at all. I just I'm very proud of Teresa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? So maybe we can go to the questions on the board. Well, I don't know if I can read it. Oh. Who is the closest one from Elite Bloggers to, to me or to us? Either from the way of blogging or yeah, from all the overall. That's really tough questions that I'm not going to answer because I, I know that this is recording, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I can tell you later. No, no I mean like each each of the blogger bloggers is like really different and very very interesting. Of course, it's like if you have a group of twenty people, some of them are closer to you, some of them are less. But I think all of them are extremely hardworking people, and I <clears throat> I'm always very fascinated how much work they can do and how motivated they are and how hard they are working because for someone it can just be like yeah yeah the bloggers are just going and writing articles but it's actually not true at all they really have extremely good plan like organization skills and they're really working hard they they can make schools they can make a lot of speeches and they they are writing books and overall so like i respect every single of them and i think each of them have something special in herself that she puts also into the blog. How many of the Czech bloggers can be full-time bloggers? Like in the way that they can earn enough money to do it? Yes. Uh, it's hard to say and uh, of course it goes a little bit up and down but there is several bloggers in Czech who now can live on blogging. There is no doubt about that. 
Several. Several. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a better number? <laughs> uh, yeah. Couple of <laughs> Much better. If I have to say a number, let's say there is at least, okay, not the number, six to ten bloggers who can live on blogging, definitely. There is six to ten bloggers who live on blogging. Yeah, or but more that. How many people can live on blogging in the future? It can be up. Yeah, it depends on them how hard they are working, how big the audience they do, and how much yeah how much energy they put into blogging. We still believe, um, and sometimes we have trouble because we have so many clients, but actually we don't have bloggers. Or yeah, to say that like there is really small portfolio portfolio of like good bloggers that have really good reach. So if any one of you want to start a blog. <laughs> I would say go for it because, and but really go for it. Not just that you write in your bio full-time blogger and you go for a coffee. Like you really, you really have to write. And I, I would say that what we are also trying to achieve in any bloggers is that we are trying to really make the blog scene like the level that is in the worldwide. You know, this, this like that the bloggers have really big reach and they are really professional and there is still a lot of room for good bloggers. So yeah, just just go for it and write us an email if you need any help. If we have a name for a boy, and look at Dave, it's a really nice name, so... Yeah, I can see they are filming up. <laughs> you cannot see it. Uh, we have uh, many names, but uh, we haven't decided on anything yet. Yeah, this is the diplomatic quest answer. <laughs> because we actually have a name. Nice. But uh, <laughs> I am, I'm not allowed to say it, because then people get so curious, like my sister, and she keeps asking me like all the time, so what is the name, what is the name? So we are supposed to say we don't have a name, but uh, yeah. But uh, for now, we can say that the name is Luke and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> what, one of them. No, no, both. Oh, Luke, Dave. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> like, like generic. Yeah. Luke, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> now I will answer the questions. <laughs> If I have any advice for the days that the dream is really far away and like you really want to give up that day. I think these days are the best days actually. No, but I, I mean it because every time I felt that I'm really bad and everything is just falling apart and everything like, I don't know, I got fired from my dream job or I didn't make it to the university in the first round. Like every single this like deep fall like made me stronger and made me actually the person who I am and made me to work a little bit harder for it. So I actually, I love those days. And I know it maybe sounds a little bit strange, but um, I kind of learned in my head that when something really, really bad happens, I can always turn it into something good. And uh, maybe one important thing to say, like also the reason why we started Elite Bloggers was that I've been really, really struggling in a way to find a good job. And I've been looking for a job for over half a year and I went to like lots of interviews and I sent hundreds of like, qu uh, what's it called? Applications. Applications, yes, thank you. <laughs> and um, I made it to the fifth round in like high position in marketing in Red Bull, but I didn't make the last round. And all these things like really kicked me in my ass. And so I think that it's, it's very, very important to have bad days, but to learn that you can always turn it into something good. So yeah, maybe the reason um, that I was struggling a lot to get a job also led me to the fact that I was just like, okay, I give up. I hate Norway. <laughs> I want to start something in Czech and yeah. So it always turns into something good. So just like try to learn to like it because it's a good thing. It's maybe painful, but it's a good thing. Další dotaz je, ahoj Terko a Jony. Zajímalo by mě, jaká kritéria musí blog splňovat, abyste ho vybrali 
the secret areas. If we are choosing them alone or if they are like writing us emails. Ah, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, the criteria for what bloggers who get into elite bloggers, it's uh, it's not any set criteria. And most important of all is that we are not choosing just out from numbers. Uh, for us, it's very important to see the person, how they are working, and especially how they are communicating with their followers and their readers, because. Uh, like the numbers is not worth anything for us and length or not as long as it's a good person who really loves what she's doing and really is passionate about it. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's also when we when we um, chose the first team, it was important that we have like different groups of bloggers. We didn't really go for only lifestyle bloggers or only food bloggers. We want to have like portfolio of different types of bloggers with different styles because we knew that we are going to reach to many, many potential clients and not every client can afford to have, you know, this blogger with a huge reach. So yeah, it's a, like a combination. Yeah, to have like a different, like various portfolio, but also as the United said, the most important criteria is that uh, that we have again we are following the intuition and we see that the blogger really wants to work hard for it and yeah, take it seriously. It's not about the numbers only. Mm -hmm. I can say yeah. the beginning. Which one? The end. Yeah, you can. Um, in I think the hardest thing was in the beginning because we really didn't know how this is going to work, and uh, we kind of yeah we rented our flat in Oslo. We moved with our seven luggage uh, to Prague, and we started the project. We had no clue if it's going to work or not, and. We actually had the first uh, presentation for around 40 or 50 Czech bloggers where we were presenting the idea and we were like inviting them to open the Google Analytics that we could check the reading numbers and stuff. And we had really good, um, like we had really good feeling from this meeting. There was a lot of interested bloggers and we were like, yeah, we are actually like doing a nice things. So we are trying to like help them in the blogging world and stuff. And then one of the bloggers who she, she decided to share like a post on Instagram where she wrote really mean things about us and about early bloggers and about that this project is really big crap and if she if anyone is going to be part of early bloggers she will stop following them and this is the worst idea ever and and we were like oh my god what in the world is that this person didn't really even talk to us in that meeting and she just decided to put it on social media which she has quite strong instagram so it started to spread around and even people who were not on the meeting they started to like comment on it and it's like yeah i knew it i knew that this is going to be like really bad and good that i didn't even come to prague for this meeting and stuff and we were like so shocked because that's something we didn't really expect because we didn't even do anything we just had this initial meeting and we got completely crushed and i remember that the next day we were leaving for our vacation and um, the vacation was eight or nine days and we we didn't speak anything about ali bloggers in the vacation we were just like no okay this was maybe a mistake and we don't know if this is going to work and what we are going to do now like we already rent the place in Oslo and we moved to Prague and I remember it was terrible terrible thing and I never felt worse than this ever. <laughs> but I think it was uh, very good for us that we had the vac vacation right after because we got away from it and we could collect new energy and when we came back we were like decided that okay we are going to make this we are going to do this it's not going to stop us that one person is spreading like unreasonable rumors about us online. Yeah, and also it was because, um, yeah, throughout this eight or nine days, a lot of bloggers actually wrote us an email and they were like, yeah, this is amazing. I want to be part of it. So it also gave us kind of the confidence to, to go for it. And but yeah, I would say that this was definitely the hardest thing that happened. And it was the beginning after that. 
everything was easy. No, <laughs> no, it was not. But this was hard, yeah, because we kind of like gave us to the bloggers, and yeah, we felt that it was very unfair. That was maybe the worst. Should I start? Mm. Um, of course, uh, we have thought about connecting with uh, YouTubers or bloggers. Um, the reason why we haven't kind of taken the step and started working with like, what is it called when they are only, yeah, like bloggers who are doing only YouTube and not blog, is because there is so many other agencies and they are getting enough help and support from all the other agencies. And also that we want to stay focused on what we are good at and not like go too wide because it will like lower the quality of the work we are doing. As I said earlier, we are of course using YouTube in some campaigns, but then often we use external bloggers or some of our bloggers also is using YouTube. When it comes to the male bloggers, that uh, of course again, we want to work with male bloggers. It's just that we have to find the right male bloggers to work with. Okay. Yeah, there's not that many of them yet. But um, we, it's, it's very popular in Norway. It's like really strong and big group of bloggers, uh, male bloggers. But uh, here, yeah, we are a little bit behind. So we are still waiting Then it can become a little bit more cooler than it is right now, I feel. Mm. But we definitely want to work with male bloggers also. Mm -hmm. We speak only English or mixing all three languages. Yeah, well, the Janere can say quite a lot in Czech, so <laughs> that's basically our conversation now. Like uh, we now we kind of slide it into speaking a lot of English because we work together and English is the language at work that we speak with uh, all the bloggers and yeah or all our partners and yeah also yeah with the employees but yeah sometimes when we want to have a secret language in a restaurant when you sit you know next to each some other couple and you really don't feel like comfortable to speak about different things then we speak Norwegian but uh, it's really, yeah, you have to be sure, you have to make sure that these people next to you are not from Norway. <laughs> because it also happened sometimes to us and it was very embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah. Czech, uh, we are speaking in parties. Or uh, I'm speaking Czech in parties. <laughs> but in parties, I'm really good in Czech, I promise. <laughs> yes. Další otázka je o tom, zda oddělujete reálný svět od toho blogového a zda vašemu okolí nevadí, že se bohužel musíte podívat a zda to nepřijde vaší rodině povrchní. Hmm. Uh, you see, oddělujeme, did you understand the question? No. <laughs> you said you speak good, Czech? Yeah, yeah, in parties. <laughs> She's a party, <laughs> almost. Yeah, if we are, uh, if I'm separating the real world from the blog world, and uh, the thing with the camera. I think we read this question in a car. Uh, yes, uh, yes. I'm separating the real world from the from the blog world. Uh, also, the like I'm trying to kind of get from off online a little bit more to offline. So I'm also trying to like meet my readers and like get to know them because all of them are really amazing people. And uh, when I started blogging, I also did my like uh, meetup of my readers, and it was really exciting. And twelve people showed up. And I was like, wow, 12 people, that's really cool. And actually it's really fun because these 12 people, they never met each other before, ever. And then um, they became really, really good friends, really close friends. And they are meeting all the time and now they are inviting me like into this group. So I think it's really fun and I want to do it a little bit more. So I want to a little bit more go from the online world to the offline to actually get the readers of the blogs to meet because most of them are like it's very similar to me. We have very similar values and I think these people would really get along. 
So yes, and if it's um, yeah with this camera, yeah, it's maybe annoying for some people, but uh, I think the most annoying is for Yonarik when we are in a restaurant and he cannot eat his food <laughs> before I take the picture. But I'm not doing it any more that much, right? No, just at home. No. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I feel that, yes, maybe in the beginning people were like making fun of me and they were like, ha, oh, yeah, this is so embarrassing. You're always taking pictures of your coffee and stuff. But um, then it became quite serious and they could see, like, oh, actually from these stupid pictures, uh, she made uh, quite a good business. So I think people respecting it much more. And yeah, I think it, they are quite surprised. So. Yeah, I hope they don't think that anymore that it's embarrassing. <laughs> How long time? How long time it took to move to Czech Republic and if we were afraid and how if we can help them how to like get rid of the afraid. It took us actually two weeks, something around two weeks, because we knew that either we are going to go for it or we should just forget about it. And we knew that the right time was then, so we knew that we don't have that much time. And yeah, if we were afraid, I think we were afraid, but um, it wasn't that crazy. We were just like, yeah, and what? Like we tried, and if it doesn't work, what happens? I think we were much more afraid after the first meeting, after this person <laughs> was posting that Instagram post. Then I started to be scared, and I was just like, oh my god, we should have really thought this through. This was not a smart move. But yeah, um, how to handle the, if you are, how to handle if you are afraid? Um, I think it's healthy in some way to be afraid. Uh, because you also will do much more than you would do if you are not afraid. So I think it's a good thing and yeah, of course it shouldn't take you that far that you would like decide rather not to do it. But I think it's, it's quite good quality to be afraid because then you are you know, having respect for what you do and you can maybe work much harder than you would if you wouldn't be afraid and if you would just feel really confident and that could be maybe be much worse after all. I think uh, the important to think about if you want to move somewhere else, it's like, what if it doesn't work? Is it a problem or is it not? Like for us, we knew that if it doesn't work, if we don't like it in Czech, we can always just move back to Norway. So there was kind of the question was more like why not than why. Hmm. It's in Slovakian. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any tips how to be happy in long, like in relationship? Yeah, that question for you, Narek. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, to be happy in relationship. Yes. I think the important thing is, of course, communication. That you learn to know each other and that you are speaking about it if there is something that is troubling you. And the other important thing I would say is the respect. And I think this is very important, and especially for me and Teresa, for example, who is working together. We basically are together 24 hours per day. And it's so important that if I feel or Teresa feel that we need some time alone or <coughs> something, the other person just have to respect it and not make any trouble about it or like fuss around it, it's just how it is and of course everyone needs some time alone sometime or have something that they don't want to share or this thing. So just communicate and have respect and everything should be fine. <laughs> mm. I think I couldn't say it better. But I also think that maybe um, also one thing that really works well in our relationship is that uh, to like support each other. Either if it's like stupid idea or good idea, okay, maybe if it's stupid idea, maybe don't support your partner that much if you know it's a stupid idea. But kind of 
like I don't know I just remember the first time we met or one of the first times we met I was just saying yeah I really love Africa I want to travel to Africa and I want to do some I don't know I don't want to help the kids in Africa and you know it was that time like yeah, okay I, I'm in I can help you there too so it's like he supported me and we didn't even knew each other and like four years later we got married and we actually traveled to Africa because I did my research for my uh, master thesis there and it was like yeah okay he can support me in anything and so that's also very very important like maybe it's uh, video games maybe it's some sport but really it's important to support your boyfriend husband yeah friend <laughs> Uh, did we have a plan B? That means like one year ago or when we started, I assume. Uh, Do you have a plan? Yeah, yeah. Did okay. you have? Mm. Yeah. Uh, early progress were first. That's correct. Uh, competition <laughs> now, I would say like, yes, of course. Like the, we are our own competition. We are not working good. It's not going to work out. And also the bloggers are our competition because it's. Not just us, but the bloggers have to want to do the right moves. They have to want to move forward. If not, we can also not move forward. Uh, I guess the question is meant more. The what is it called? It's more um, precise question. And no, we don't have any other elite bloggers agency who works in the same way as we are doing. Of course, there is a lot of marketing and commercial agencies and PR agencies who are working with influencers but they are going on it a different or opposite way than we are doing. We are working with the bloggers, they are working with the clients. So they are just having the clients and then they find different influencers to make the campaigns while we are working with the bloggers and finding clients for them. Yeah, maybe back to the competition, I would say, because a lot of people are always asking like, why is there so many companies who are representing YouTubers? And there is basically one company who is representing bloggers. And that's, of course, flattering for us. But uh, um, I feel that we, since the very, very beginning, it wasn't for us, it wasn't like pure business. It wasn't, we didn't do the move because we wanted to earn a lot of money and I don't know, get a lot of investors into the company in the future and stuff like that. It was more that we really liked what we were doing and we were really motivated to do it because we wanted really to lift the blog sphere in the Czech Republic higher. And also because I'm a blogger, I'm not any businesswoman who just had this like eyes on numbers. So I always wanted to put something for myself into the business, into the way that like how we were handling the bloggers, how we were communicating with the bloggers. So we kind of made a like very personal relationship with every single of them. And I think that's what makes it different from the other companies. That there's just like some people who are like taking the bloggers as like I would say like maybe clients, we take them more like our partners, we kind of build it together. Elite Bloggers is a, like a big team of bloggers that we are like supporting each other and like lifting everyone else up. Not that there is us and them, not split it. Yeah, so maybe that's that's the difference why there is just maybe only one Elite Blogger. But I would say that uh, we would really appreciate any competition. I think it's healthy and I think it would even make us work harder and yeah. Mm. Yeah, competition is always good. Uh, the plan B, uh, basically we didn't have any plan B because uh, what we did was that we rented out our apartment in Oslo on a short term basis. So we knew that if it doesn't work out, if the company didn't, or didn't even get started because we didn't get the bloggers or there was no clients, we could always move back to Norway. And we always said from the start that we would go half a year, we would try it out and then we would see. And if we like it, and if it's going good, we stay, and if not, we are just moving back again. So we always had the option to go back. But uh, it went good, and we loved it here, especially me. <laughs> so, we stayed. Jak moc je pro vás stresující, že vaše vlastní podnikání stojí a padá právě na vás? How stressful it is that the, our business is only on us. And if something fails, it fails on us. Hmm. Do you want to answer? Yeah. I'm stressed now. <laughs> <You're interested. laughs> I just realized. <laughs> uh, I would say that 
yes, it can be stressful, but I think especially what I'm choosing to do is that I'm choosing to ignore that fact. I don't feel I can go around and be worried about that if something fails, it fails on us. That we just have to do the best and uh, it should work. Mm -hmm. I think um, also a very important thing from the beginning was that uh, we kind of made the plan that we didn't want to put a lot of our money. We didn't want to like invest almost anything into the company. We didn't have to borrow, we didn't get uh, a loan to start a company. And that was quite nice because we were just investing our time and energy. Like we made the websites ourselves, we kind of started in our apartment, we like we didn't really have to pay anything. So maybe it's much harder when you want to open your own store and you have to kind of take the risk that you buy a lot of clothes and then nobody wants to buy this clothes. So that's maybe much worse. But with us it was maybe a little bit easier in the beginning because we just made deals with the bloggers and we were like, okay, if the companies want to work with them, we make a deal. We only put our time and energy. We didn't have to really take a big risk when it comes to the money because maybe that can be a little bit stressful for some people. And yeah. And also the negative side by being stressed about this is nothing compared to the joy of the freedom you have when you are running your own company. Not that we are not working a lot, but just to know that we kind of can do what we want, when we want, it's very freeing. Exactly. Then I'm going to ask you the first one. I'm going to ask you what was the first success on the way that you said to yourself, like, you realize that this is the right path, this is, this is we are on the right track. Mm -hmm. What was the moment, the first brand or the first big, uh, another blogger who you like, connect yourself with? Mm. Should I start? Mm. Uh, I would say that, especially in the start, there was this small successes all the time. Because every little small thing was great for us. But uh, the first one was, of course, when we got the bloggers to sign the contract. Because we moved to Czech without having anything, just the idea and the will to do it. But when we actually got the bloggers to sign, then we knew that, of course, we are in the right way because we got very big bloggers to sign with us. And that was the first one. And on the other side, the first one was probably when we signed the first like big client, a little bit bigger budget and everything. And that was like, I would say, two months after we started, where we kind of had a meeting and we suddenly had different numbers than what we've been talking about earlier. Yeah, I think I that was the moment you were talking that Yonarik was waiting outside on the bench and I went from the meeting and I was like, oh, they have that big budget. And it was like 10 times higher than the budget we were even expecting. And we were like, oh my God, this is really good. So I think for me, that was the moment when we, when we were like, okay, this is going to work. This is, this is good. But we are, we, uh, unfortunately, we cannot tell the client, but it was a big client. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have a question for, for John Eric. How is it for you to live in Czech Republic and what is the biggest difference compared to Norway? Uh, I would say that to live in Czech for me is amazing. I really, really like it here and I kind of don't want to move back ever. Oh. I should be careful to say that now. I know Teresa <laughs> dream about going back sometime. But for me the big difference is the people in Czech and the atmosphere, I would say. In Norway, it's very normal that after work you go home and you watch some TV, you make a dinner and you go to sleep and the next day you go to work again. But in Czech, it's more like you go out, you meet friends, you are, there's so much more energy in the, the atmosphere, is so more, much more energetic. And uh, I really, really like it. And I like in the summer when you are at work and it's so natural that you go out and you sit in Prague somewhere and have a beer with friends and yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you think your readers would be interested in reading more about serious topics such as sustainability, current political situation? I think maybe yes, but um, I'm always trying to be careful what I'm writing about because I don't want to become this blogger to comment on political situation when I don't really understand it. 
uh, even though I studied political science, but obviously it's not my biggest interest. But um, yes, I think I, I'm, and I think the plan is to put a little bit more serious topics in inside the blog and uh, to maybe a little bit study what I'm going to write about because uh, yeah, I want uh, my writings to be high quality and and good. But um, I think um, sometimes I think that the article is really really good, full of really good facts and information, and nobody wants to read it. So it's also I have to follow the readers and maybe there is a very small group of people who would be interested in political science or political situation or my comments on political situation somewhere. But uh, yeah, we will see. I think it's, it's, it's good to have like a good mixture of different topics that people like and I feel that I already know the audience who I'm speaking to. But yeah, my audience really likes Sunday brunches, so <laughs> I think I will maybe keep doing that. And as also, everything has to like come from me. If I like to write about it, the article is good. If I would be forced to write about it, I'm not sure if it, the article would be good. Thank you. Thank you.